who don't have much experience can also be present and participate. The, the second message I want to say is that although those here, many of those here do not have much experience in applying gender tools and concepts, we learn by doing. And the way to do gender is actually to start applying it in your work without fearing that you're going to make mistakes or that you're going to do something wrong. It's actually start applying what little you know to the situation that you're in. And I think this is the, way, the only way we're going to get results in this. So this forum is an opportunity for those of us who don't know much about gender to learn from those who do. And it's the ideas and the tools that we can learn in this forum that hopefully will help us to apply and mainstream gender in our work. So with those brief remarks, let me once more welcome you to the forum and back to you, Esther. Thank you very much, Alistair, for that opportunity of welcoming our presenter, Dr. Maureen Miruka, and also the participants that are in different locations. Today, we have an opportunity yet again to have a space where we can discuss gender issues, where we have an opportunity to discuss what it means to integrate gender in our research work, and also look at somebody who has done an integration of gender into their systems, and it has worked. And as Alistair says, we can learn from those who have already done it, and this is what we are doing. And I want to introduce Maureen Miruka. She comes from uh, CARE USA. It is a program that uh, she's running a program and leading a team of people in Tanzania. And before she became the team leader, she worked as a senior technical advisor for sustainable agriculture at her institution. And before that, I'm happy to say that she was a principal researcher in Kairi. And while she was at Kairi, she worked as a national coordinator for gender and participatory research. And she has a lot of interests on gender and women empowerment in agriculture-based livelihoods. She has a PhD in natural resources from the University of London in London, in the UK. Maureen is not exactly new to ICRISAT because she has, uh, when she did her PhD, she interacted a lot with the people in ICRISAT where she was getting her leads and doing her experiments in collaboration with uh, workers who were here in ICRISAT before us. And she's also not new to the CG and the CRP jargon. She's actually a member of the Scientific and Partnerships Advisory Committee of the CGIR Research Program on Fish and Livestock. So uh, she has a lot of experience in gender work. And when Vicky Wild visited our TL2 program in April, and when I was reporting to work, she actually suggested that we should talk to Pathways, the program that Maureen is leading, so that we can learn what they are doing. And out of that discussion, then we have the opportunity today to get together and discuss what they are doing, and we see what we can learn from them. So, Maureen, I want to welcome you to give us your presentation. Uh, thank you, Esther, for, for that introduction. I, as, as, as Esther said, I'm not entirely new to ICRISAT, and this corridor was around here. I see one familiar face. <laughs> uh, in addition to Esther, uh, those days I worked with Dr. Ellie Minja, for those who are familiar with her, and Baba Tunde. Uh, in, in, in sorghum, um, I sourced most of the, 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 the sorghum seed that we, that we worked with at, um, uh, at Kari during my, when I was doing my research. Uh, beyond that, being based in Kari for 16 years, I interacted uh, a lot with the people from the, the, the CG, or, or, you know, at least in, 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 in work for us. So I joined CARE in, 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 in 2012 uh, to, to work with the Pathways uh, program, whose uh, main objective is empowering women in equitable agricultural systems at scale. Uh, I'm not here to talk about the program as such, uh, but to talk about how we are integrating gender in our work uh, and the gender, um, using gender transformative uh, approaches. So I'll not go into okay. 
Uh, sorry, we'd just like to share the, the screen. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, the, 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 the broader uh, objective uh, for the Pathways Program is to empower women in agricultural uh, systems at uh, scale. Um, Pathways is an anchor program for the Food and Nutrition Security um, uh, Unit at, uh, at Care USA. Uh, we've just gone through um, uh, a restructure where we are positioning ourselves because care is moving towards uh, a care global uh, by the year 2020. Uh, we want to break uh, the, the silos and go from Care USA, Care, care Denmark and have the like Care International. So as we move towards uh, the Care International and Care Global, uh, we are restructuring and reprioritizing food and nutrition security and women's empowerment uh, have been reprioritized and Pathways is one of the anchor programs under this um, under food and nutrition uh, uh, security. I was also saying that I will not go into uh, the statistics. I can't go to the next slide. This technology is completely new to me. Yeah, I will not go into the into the literature on why uh, the role that women and and, and and gender as a whole play in, uh, in 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 agriculture because we have all these statistics from FAO and everywhere and the World Bank. Um, uh, I mean, with us, and by the time we are sitting here to have a gender forum and a gender discussion, then it does show that we appreciate uh, the the role that it uh, it plays. Um, but at CARE, we, uh, our mandate, our impact group is uh, women smallholders. And uh, the reason that we focus on women smallholders, of course, is because social norms and institutional structures uh, have, uh, you know, from time immemorial, constrained uh, women's uh, productivity. And as much as you find that interventions are often intended uh, to reach poor women smallholders, holders, they are not often designed uh, to actually uh, uh, get uh, get to them. And um, uh, so it means that uh, improving women's access uh, to resources requires uh, a deliberate uh, planned and uh, radical transformation in gender relations uh, for us to be able to make um, uh, a, a, a difference. What we did uh, with the Pathways program is to is to design it around uh, three objectives uh, that basically uh, focus around um, increasing the actual productive engagement of women in sustainable agriculture. And this first objective uh, focuses on direct uh, programming and uh, implementation on the on the ground. Uh, this program is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation and is a learning grant for both uh, CARE and, 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 and the Gates Foundation. Therefore, our objective um, two um, really focuses on how to enhance high quality women rep rep responsive uh, programming uh, in CARE just within the countries that we implement in and other uh, care, care international uh, members, while Objective 3 focuses on how to contribute uh, to the global discourse that surrounds uh, uh, women and agriculture and actually fits uh, within the context of this forum that we, that we, that we have today. Uh, so Pathways is implemented in uh, six countries, uh, two in Asia, that is India and Bangladesh, and four in Africa, Malawi, Tanzania, Ghana, and, uh, and Mali. Uh, the, these countries were chosen to represent a diverse range of contexts that present difficult food and security situations, but also offer potential uh, opportunities for uh, improving um, the women's position in, in agriculture and also uh, empowering them. Um, it's a five-year program 
Uh, we had an initial inception phase uh, that lasted two years. Uh, we, be we began actual implementation in the year 2012 and are now in the, in the second year and uh, hoping to end in the first phase in March uh, 20, uh, 2016. Um, we work across uh, several value chains uh, in each of the countries, and some of those might be uh, some that cut across uh, with ECRISAT, but the criteria for selecting these particular value chains in, in each of the countries uh, were, one, of course, uh, profitability, because we aimed at increasing both, uh, you know, uh, profitability, uh, productivity, but also pro profitability, because uh, we, we wanted to uh, to benefit uh, women. So another criteria is their potential to benefit women and transform gender roles in agriculture. Of course, the geographical uh, suitability and also taking into consideration at that time the Bill and Melinda uh, Gates uh, priority uh, commodities, as you know. Uh, they keep uh, uh, changing, some of all of these were, but currently these are uh, some of the priorities that we are covering with regards to the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation uh, priority uh, commodities. Uh, I'll go straight into the business of the day uh, on how uh, we uh, approach uh, gender integration uh, within uh, the program. And I'll take you through uh, uh, two two main areas, that is empowering uh, interventions uh, and the framework that we use uh, for, 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 for empowering uh, interventions. Uh, we'll also take you through how we move towards uh, gender transformative strategies and also the fact that uh, we work uh, with our partners in building the organizational systems and culture that ensure we are the partners of choice uh, for poor and marginalized uh, uh, women. In another context, I've gone through the background of how care has, through the years, gone through prioritizing women and women's uh, uh, empowerment. But I'm sure that is information you can find in our website without me having to go, um, uh, to, to go through it. Uh, one area that I will not, I will cover women's empowerment, engaging men and boys. I will not go into collectives because it's a whole other area where we, both research and development actors really go into engaging groups and collectives as a means of reaching uh, their, their, their impact groups. But regarding that, I will just say that we have an entire collective's learning agenda uh, that questions how women benefit from different types of groups that they work in, in terms of their gender relations, in terms of their voice within uh, their households, uh, their communities, and, and, and the ag and markets activities that they focus on. So I will go uh, straight into the women's uh, empowerment. Our work in Pathways is nested within the broader uh, care women's uh, empowerment uh, framework. And I'll say that care defines empowerment as the sum total of changes are needed for a woman to realize her full uh, human rights and is the interplay in changes between the agency, that is a woman's own aspirations and capabilities. So this covers the skills, the capacities, the information, their self-confidence, their aspirations, you know, for oneself, uh, decision-making confidence, their knowledge of laws and, and, uh, and, and, and rights. Uh, it also uh, covers the structure, that is the environment that surrounds and, 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 and conditions her, cho her choices. So these then will cover the customs, the traditions, the laws and policies that we uh, that we cut across in agriculture markets, uh, gender and all those, and the actual rules for accessing uh, services and resources. This would mean uh, extension and access to natural resources, uh, productive uh, 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 resources. Uh, the other area is the relations, that, that is the power relations through which she negotiates uh, her path. And this we have their male uh, partners, and this is where we begin, we begin to bring in uh, the discussion on engaging men and boys, uh, the market and other actors, the community leaders who are actually uh, the gatekeepers of, the, of, of, of our societies, and the collective action and uh, group, group solidarity. As I said, we work uh, with women in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in collectives. And then, of course, the change agents. So the sum total of these uh, three key areas, the agency structures and relations, is then supposed to lead to uh, equity uh, empowerment and uh, uh, productivity. 
Uh, most significantly, this uh, framework uh, entails challenging norms, which are considered to be structures, because these are embedded uh, in our lives and in our uh, societies, and not just building on the individual, because most uh, women in development approaches or the approaches that we mostly dealt with, the gender and agriculture approaches, focused on the agency, on the self, you know, on building the individual skills and capacity of, 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 men, uh, of many, um, of individual men and women in households without going into the fact that gender is, uh, is a relational um, uh, is a relational aspect that the gender is relational and recognizes the, the, the structures and the relations that this particular individual then uh, operates around. Uh, so for us to be able to actualize this, um, uh, the, 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 the Women in Empowerment Framework in Pathways, uh, we have a, a theory uh, of change, which is global. This was... Um, uh, it was each of the six countries uh, did their own theories of change that was brought together into a global theory uh, uh, of change that addresses the underlying causes of poverty and women's exclusion in, uh, in, in, in agriculture. So across each of these countries, NK identified five change levers uh, that are, are bound to lead uh, to productivity and profitability, equity and empowerment. And if I'll just take you through those, they sort of define all our activities and the work that we do in Pathways. Uh, the first change lever is uh, the capacity, and you will get to see that this then relates to the to the to the agency, uh, to the agency uh, bit of the the women uh, empowerment framework, where we build the knowledge, the skills, uh, and the of, of the specific women smallholders that we work with, and the self confidence, their conviction of power. Uh, once then we build the capacity, there is the access. They need to have the access to productive resources, access to markets, uh, access to land, eh, and access to inputs that are reliable. And once uh, you combine the uh, capacity and the access, it's bound to lead to increased uh, productivity in terms of improved yields uh, and then uh, improved um, uh, uh, incomes through adoption of sustainable agriculture practices and uh, value chain um, uh, engagement, value chain development. Uh, but to ensure that then we have equitable uh, uh, distribution of benefits in households, uh, we have the fourth change lever on household influence that ensures that women are uh, contribute to and have an influence over income and decision making uh, within within the household, and that all these four change levers then can only happen under uh, an enabling environment, which is the um, which is the the, the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, change lever. Um, so uh, we are mostly, I think, I mean, as Icris said, we, we are probably very familiar with the capacity access uh, uh, productivity. So I want to just highlight the, 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 the fourth and the fifth uh, change levers and say that it also does recognize the intra-household uh, power relations when we go back to that, uh, to, to, the, to the theory of change. And also the enabling environment is not just necessarily the policies and institutions as, uh, uh, as we work with them, but it also the normative environment, the, the, the attitudes, the beliefs, uh, the, the, the practices, and hence then engaging uh, uh, men and boys and, and thought leaders uh, such as religious leaders that are are, are bound to work on these uh, cultural uh, dimensions of, of, uh, of uh, uh, relations. And so beyond the theory of change, then we uh, had to, uh, to, <laughs> to take this uh, uh, on, on, the, on the ground through a specific uh, core approaches. And one of these is the engaging collectives as the main uh, medium through which uh, uh, we work uh, with, the, with, with communities. And collectives here, uh, I mean the village savings and uh, uh, loans associations, which are one of the, um, should I call it a trademarks of care, self-help groups. Uh, in India, we have you know, forest users groups and, and all these different types of, of collectives. And that's why we refer to them as collectives and not just uh, uh, groups. Uh, then we uh, have a sustainable agriculture uh, component where we are focusing on climate smart uh, agricultural practices. 
uh, market linkages and uh, value chain uh, development that ties up with the, with, the, with the agriculture. And of course, uh, we are here today because of the gender empowerment and engaging men and boys uh, uh, a component. And then uh, nutrition. We do not. We are not heavy on the nutrition activities as in, in in all of the countries, but we are measuring nutrition outcomes in our bigger um, uh, bigger MND uh, uh, framework. We also have uh, the monitoring, evaluation, and learning that cuts across all of these components. And I will talk uh, in detail a bit about the, the 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 monitoring, evaluation, and and learning. So um, as the program uh, was drafted, one of the questions that emerged is how do we uh, synchronize and sequence these approaches so that they don't appear as uh, technical areas, so that they are not uh, like in you know six uh, little uh, uh, project, and so how do we uh, you know uh, sequence them? Uh, so we sat down and looked through the pharma, the traditional pharma field school approach for those who are, are familiar with it, uh, that is based on you know, experimental learning, that is based on adult learning uh, uh, approaches. And we added the business component of it because the traditional pharma field school mostly demonstrated agricultural practices uh, on, the, on the field. So we did not form new groups. As I said, we began uh, working with the existing uh, collectives. And the difference between these, uh, uh, the, the pharma field and business school and the, and, and the pharma field school, it's that the curriculum integrates sustainable agriculture, market engagement, uh, gender uh, dialogues, nutrition, and participatory uh, m and &E, in which groups of farmers meet throughout the season led by community-based trainers and go through uh, a sequence of, uh, of lessons in each of the key technical areas. And I'm going to show you how, uh, how we do that. Uh, so basically, it goes through eight steps, just like the farmer uh, field school, where we lay the foundation, train the facilitators is one of the things we did heavily in the, in the, first, in the first year. And you train them on community-based you know, uh, facilitation skills, community visioning, uh, approaches to sustainable agriculture in each of the technical uh, areas. And then they established uh, the, the farmer field and business school and went on with running them. Then, of course, uh, through the season, you go on with the participatory production and marketing uh, uh, activities. We have the field days and special topic days, uh, graduation ceremonies. And the idea is to enhance sustainability so that uh, in the second season, we have farmer run, farmer field, and business schools where we have a gradual exit of facilitators, uh, you know, from formal organizations uh, such uh, as CARE. Um, it's a learning in progress, the Pharma Field and Business School. We are currently conducting a cost-benefit analysis of what it costs to, to run this school. And there's a lot of learning that we are still uh, going through in this uh, approach that we'd be happy to, to, to share as we, uh, as, we, as we go along. Uh, but so as part of community mobilization, we had to ensure that the community-based trainers, uh, our partners that we are working with, also internalize integration in terms of what it is to in uh, integrate these key approaches, as well as integrate gender in this. And uh, uh, as I was doing this, I was remembering that in the first uh, in the first box that you see, we actually did that in Malawi, and we had a lot of IC research. Uh, about three ICRISAT uh, staff represented in this meeting. And the way we think as scientists is to look at the boxes and think of the relationships and what activities cut across agriculture and gender. But we also went uh, down to the communities uh, to, to see that uh, uh, how do they visualize or, or conceptualize um, uh, uh, integration. So you'd find, um, where is the pointer? This one, yeah. So this is in Tanzania, this is in, is in Swahili. So the farmers would come up and, and the community-based trainers with a concept that, you know, markets, Masoko is markets are the ones that really, uh, you know, drive uh, production, which is, uh, which is over there. And then you need, you know, nutrition, uh, you need to be well nourished, uh, you know, to have the energy to, 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 to you know, to, for agricultural productivity. But in, in, in both cases, you will see that gender is then considered as the, 
as uh, you need a gender balance, you need uh, that kind of stability, the, the relations and the structures for all of these to be able to uh, uh, to work. Uh, I don't, I haven't ever ridden a, bis a bicycle actually. So for those who have, <laughs> you might be able to relate that to something like this, that markets then are the driver, but then gender is 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 considered as as, as one of those areas where we need a balance uh, for for there to be uh, to be equity. So after we go through this understanding of why this is an integrated program and why it leads to that uh, theory of change, uh, we get done with the community-based trainers again with the communities and through uh, the agricultural uh, calendar, uh, plot the various lessons and activities that would fall under a key area. So if I would give an example of you know, compost making in agriculture, that has to begin like two two months before uh, the, the the actual cropping uh, the actual cropping season. So it means that that lesson has to be held about two and a half or three months before the season. So we go through what lessons are required under each component. So each component represents a different color. And why this is important, you'd find is that with the gender lessons, where we've had a lot of gender dialogues, especially in West Africa, we need to have the gender dialogues three months before. And the lessons around the gender dialogues then have to be delivered before. So this is one what was one one key area of the pharma field and business school in being able to show uh, scheduling and synchronization of uh, activities, and then it is translated into the work plans of uh, of our staff, uh, community-based uh, trainers and partners that we uh, that we th that we work with. Uh, beyond uh, the community-based trainers and our partners and, ev and, and, and everyone that we work with, we also needed to develop an entire toolkit that covers all of those lessons. So each of these uh, cards represents one lesson and we needed to develop a toolkit that goes, if it's compost preparation, this is what you do. If it's a gender dialogue on land, this is what you do. If it's a gender dialogue on household uh, decision making, this is the lesson. So um, uh, the core team that I work with, who are based at, uh, who are um, based at Care USA, but in different parts of, of the world, like I am in Tanzania, uh, developed uh, this toolkit, and it is also another uh, work in progress and something, an area that we have discussed with Esther before. That is an area of, you know, that we can learn from and 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 partner with. So we have uh, this in the Care uh, Pathways uh, Wiki Space. So our staff uh, throughout care are able to get into this wiki space and and uh, and access whatever tool they would need. These are the ag tools. You will find the gender tools. Each of the the the, the, the specific tools, you know, take it and download it. So we have it in three languages. We have uh, it in French and Swahili. But beyond these, in different countries, such as in Malawi, they also have a Chichewa version. In, in Mali, they also have a Bamara version because that is the area where we work so that it's the, the, the community-based trainers are able to use it. Uh, as I said, it's a work in progress and in the, in the coming year, we want to be able to have this um, you know, as a product uh, that, that, that we can share uh, for use at different, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, levels. So um, I think that background was to say that we have integrated gender as a specific technical uh, component in the entire, in all the work that we do. It is not an add-on. I know <laughs> I worked in Curry before where people would come uh, to Esther and myself and tell you to look at a proposal and add a few lines here and there on gender to make it, you know, uh, uh, presentable uh, to, uh, to, the, to the donor or to convince the donor. But this just goes to show that in the entire pharma field and business school that we are doing, gender is one of those components. It's integrated in all the work that we are doing because uh, we are not just focusing on the agriculture and the markets. And I think um, uh, that's the purpose of um, this presentation, to be able to show how we've been able to, to, inter to integrate that, uh, sorry. So now I'll take you to the, the, the other level that I talked about on the gender uh, transformative approaches, the specific ways in which uh, we are going towards gender transformative uh, approaches, because that is uh, one area that Esther uh, uh, outlined to me uh, about how, 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 how do we uh, do this. So I'll start by uh, showing you this figure that is, illustrates a continuum of, of, uh, of, of uh, approaches uh, to gender integration. I'm sure you'll about find this uh, anywhere, but we 
we as care, and I believe as ICRISAT, are interested in being, oops, in being uh, around this region where we are either accommodating but heading towards this uh, direction and not being uh, uh, exploitative. So I think over here we can begin soul searching ourselves if we are in this direction and, and begin to want to move uh, in that other uh, uh, direction. Uh, this is because accommodating and transformative approaches are informed, uh, are, 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 are informed um, by an awareness of the different uh, contexts, uh, you know, country-specific, household, community-specific uh, 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 contexts, and to enable as design interventions that then ensure that we continue to make it better and do not uh, do uh, any, any harm. So uh, in the subsequent slides, I will go through uh, each of them and show how we have been able, uh, you know, to, to, to move towards the green uh, bit of that bar. And as I said before, in Pathways, we aim to raise, you know, to raise the bar. In five years, we, we aim to have moved away from accommodating to transformative. You'd never quite uh, get to the end because it takes a long time to make some of these, um, some of these uh, 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 changes. So, uh, exploitative, uh, approaches are those that use existing uh, gender roles for efficient project gains. And these are mostly come from those proposals that then had a line or two or a paragraph thrown in on gender. And they actually serve to reinforce gender norms or uh, uh, inequalities. And this might happen even by default in a program like Pathways where we have market committees. So under the market component, we have the market committees that are that are a representative, uh, represent the farmers in being able to source uh, uh, markets. And so we will tend to have men in these committees because men are better negotiators. They are more mobile in being able to reach uh, distant uh, markets. There are more. Uh, numerate, so you would let them lead the market uh, committees. And you'd be surprised that the women, the women farmers actually also support this, that because men are more mobile, let them uh, participate in, this, uh, in these uh, uh, committees. Another example that we had when we began in India is that the demo, most of the demonstration farmers where we do the, the, the ag at the ag component of the work were initially men by default. And so the male uh, staff that we had for, with market, ag and market uh, backgrounds, they saw no problem with the mechanized weeders actually being given to men, yet the weeding was a women's activity. So uh, the message they passed is that uh, when it is drudgerous and when it is mechanized, it is a women's, it's a man's a domain, but when it is when we have to use one hand, hand weeding and everything, then it is when it is a tool, then it becomes a man's domain. But when it is uh, a drudger, as then it's a women's domain. So when we come in with an intervention with a mechanized weeder that doesn't take this into consideration, then we actually uh, make it uh, make it uh, make it worse. So um, to to move from that uh, part of the bar uh, to, to the more accommodating, uh, what we've done is to invest in skills and confidence, uh, as you saw in in the in the in the framework and in our theory of change, and addressing these barriers such as mobility. Uh, for instance, in, in in India, Bangladesh, we are piloting with agri input kiosks that bring the inputs right uh, close to where the the, uh, the farmers are and the women are, and also working, uh, you know, through markets with the aggregation and, and collectives to ensure that uh, these mobility constraints are are then, uh, you know, uh, uh, demol uh, are abolished. And we're also working under the collectives and the community, the, the collective strengthening component to ensure that the structures have quotas, that may, women take a leadership position at all levels, even in the, in the, in, in the market committees. Uh, we also, um, uh, one thing that we have been going through, as I said, we have a collective's learning agenda is to ensure that groups have reflective practice and gender technical people to recognize, uh, point out, and analyze gender exploitative ideas and practices. And uh, as much as we have the gender technical people, it is, uh, as Alistair said, it, it is something that we all 
need to have the capacity and skills to be able to do and to actively practice challenging uh, these norms if we want to have a transformative uh, uh, approach. Uh, in, in terms of the accommodating, which is where uh, a lot of uh, people lie, we work with within existing uh, divisions because it's uh, uh, comfortable. It compensates for the gender differences, but doesn't try to change, to challenge uh, the underlying uh, norms uh, uh, under that. So it find in a value chain approach, as we all want to, 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 uh, to work with, we select those value chains where women are already dominant. That is something that we, we did even as we began uh, pathways and then try to compensate uh, for the disadvantages that they face uh, uh, in, in these particular value chains, try to make up by organizing them in collectives and all these approaches that we work with, and then also improving the actual benefits that they derive uh, uh, from this uh, chain. And you would find even like, I mean, when I worked at Curry and what we did is to ensure we work around meeting times. Initially, if you go to the communities at eight in the morning, the women are not going to be you know, available for meetings. So let's work within times when they are available to come for these meetings. When they have finished all the other work, let us make the meetings, you know, child friendly and let us work around innovations that do not add uh, to existing uh, uh, workloads uh, uh, for uh, for women. So the key, the key message here is do not harm. Uh, it's a safe space to be. But really, if we want to make a long-term and sustainable change, then we have to make it better and, and, and make it uh, uh, transformative. So we have an example of uh, uh, a program in Bangladesh, the Strengthening Dairy Value Chain uh, Project, which a pathway is learned a lot from even the monitoring and the evaluation framework where uh, it selected a chain, a value chain, like the, the, the daily value chain, where women were not uh, really present and then moved them into stages from production to, uh, you know, uh, to collection and then being in charge and, and, and using, um, what are they called? They hadn't been present there, so that you would find women in, in collective centers being trained on how to feed their animals so that they have the, the, the fat tester, you know. So the, the quality of their milk, uh, is, they, are, they, are, they are paid based on the quality and the fat content, uh, you know, of their milk. So they were moved in stages through this, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this program. So, uh, as I said, uh, the transformative then approach, it recognizes and it changes the, the fundamental inequalities. So like for the STBC project, what did it take uh, to move women from just being, you know, laborers uh, for, for the family and for their husbands into participating in, in the chain and, 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 and having a, a clear niche uh, around, around that? So in particular, under the transformative approaches, we challenge the false uh, dichotomy of the breadwinner uh, versus the, the caregiver, which uh, devalues the importance of uh, reproductive work. But it doesn't only work against women, it excludes men from the knowledge they might need to make better caregiving uh, decisions. But it also justifies exclusion of men, uh, of women from basic, uh, you know, like niches within uh, uh, like specific value chains because of lack of decision making uh, components. So um, in pathways, how have we sought uh, to be transformative? Uh, as I've said before and shown before, it is through the pharma field and business school uh, gender component of uh, of, of our work, and there are a few key areas where we work, and I'll just highlight some of those. One of those is in uh, decision making, as I said, for women to be able to have that influence, uh, the contributions they make to household income streams uh, ha has to reflect, but we often find that they lack control over financial uh, decisions. So um, in that repository of tools that, that I showed, you'd find we have one tool as the cash flow tree that uh, uh, the communities uh, sit together. And uh, um, I think a common practice is to separate the men and the women uh, so that they each contribute. When you look at a household, what are the income uh, uh, you know, streams? Who, who contributes to each of those? And how are those uh, spent and by who? 
So when you do this separately, bring them together, and the men begin to understand that uh, seriously the women are disadvantaged, and probably where the household that not, does not have a lot of that productivity is because the women are not putting in enough here because they know that they do not benefit from this. So that's an example of some of the tools uh, that we work with at community level. Another tool is a joint budgeting tool uh, to help couples make decisions and calculations together. And as I showed uh, on the on the uh, how we, we work along the seasonal uh, the seasonal calendar is to ensure that the joint budgeting tool then comes after the second reading when the season is a bit light uh, and the activities are not many and they can sit down and go through these tools just before harvest and then they can be able to make uh, joint uh, uh, decisions. Another area is in uh, workload sharing where we work with the men to normalize involvement in caregiving and workload sharing. Is everything okay? Can everyone hear me? Okay, yeah, and, uh, to, and, and, and workload uh, sharing. And this is one area that has actually been successful in terms of the, the continuous dialogues that we keep having on the daily clock is a common approach. Uh, where communities go through what a day in the life of a you know smallholder woman, uh, a smallholder man looks like, but then going through with some tools as affirmations and and, and commitments within the household. Uh, we also have some other tools as uh, harmony in the home. I would be able to share this uh, with Esther later to be able to share with uh, everybody else that would be interested the whole array of of uh, of gender tools that we use. Uh, beyond that, we are able to track in, the, in a participatory performance tracker, which is an ME tool that I'm going to talk about later. But it goes beyond just uh, uh, going through these tools, but it is actually monitoring the adoption of some of these positive, uh, uh, I mean, some of these practices at, a, at household uh, level. Another area is uh, with regards to numeracy and, uh, and market uh, skills. Uh, especially in the market uh, calculations, the, the cost of production has transformed uh, women's uh, ability to negotiate. We have very good examples uh, from uh, Malawi. Women can negotiate comfortably. They have been able to deal with, with middlemen. And I was quite encouraged the last time I visited Malawi, actually one of the women stood up and did a break-even analysis uh, of, of her own uh, produce, uh, the groundnut and, 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 and soybean. But beyond them being able to do this analysis together uh, as a household, we also um, uh, have a heavy component on record keeping because without uh, keeping records, then you'd not be able to, um, you know, to, to categorize these, uh, these uh, costs. Another area that we have worked on uh, and have been quite successful is uh, land access and uh, land rights. And it's not just focusing on uh, uh, or just access, but control and tenure uh, as uh, security. So uh, in Mali, Ghana especially, and in Tanzania, we are working with existing uh, laws and, and provisions. We are working uh, with, in partnership with the Landesa, is a global NGO that works on, uh, on land. There are also a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grantee, and we are working together on, on land literacy and also, especially in Tanzania, on, on, on in, their, in, their, in their curriculum, in their gender curriculum uh, at this institution to ensure that they, they take on board land uh, uh, literacy. We've been able to secure land uh, for women on on a on a on a long term on a long term basis and have specific gender dialogues that are not just targeting the communities but are also targeting the religious leaders, uh, the chiefs who who, who control these uh, communal uh, land tenorship uh, systems. Uh, Another area that uh, I mentioned and will mention again is the engaging men and boys and local institutional uh, structures, such as the, uh, the, the traditional, the religious leaders, the male champions and change engines, because these actually act as the gatekeepers uh, of, our, of, of our communities. And we've been able to, uh, uh, to, to get through to this, for them to be able to support the program and, and allocate land, 
uh, change some of these uh, norms and practices that have been uh, uh, been hindering uh, women's uh, empowerment and causing uh, backlash. One of the basic uh, uh, transformative areas that we've had to work on in India and Bangladesh is actually promoting the image that women are farmers. When we got to work, especially in Bangladesh with our farmers, we got to realize that women were considered even as wage uh, laborers within their own farms and within their own uh, uh, households. So we've been trying to promote uh, these uh, uh, messages through our demos, also reinforcing uh, this message with government uh, extension workers, input uh, suppliers, and to show that uh, the, the women are not necessarily just uh, consumers, they are also, uh, you know, buyers. Uh, and, and have a potential uh, to play a bigger role in this uh, in this uh, value chains. So, in one of these uh, areas, you would see uh, one of the women who's a community-based trainer, because of her her dedication, was recognised by the district authority in Bangladesh. Which for us, getting a certificate might be an everyday thing, but this served to really pass a message on the role that women can play as community-based trainers. Uh, it beats, you know, the, the, the stereotypes on their mobility, their literacy, and ability to make uh, a difference in the, in, in, in the, in, in the community. Mm, the other area that I said I would talk about is engaging uh, uh, men and boys. And in care uh, as a whole and uh, pathways, we do this through uh, two, two ways. Uh, engaging with the elites and power holders, I think I have just covered that, but also engaging the male partners of our impact group. Uh, I think the, the main importance of this slide is how do we uh, do that with the continued uh, gender dialogues with the elites and, 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 the, uh, and the male partners. Uh, this gentleman here is a chief uh, in Malawi and we're having uh, a gender dialogue on, on household income decision making, as you saw in the other, in the other slide, uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the ways in which household income is used for was for alcohol. So to be able to, to use that cash flow tree, finally, you do a, a dialogue like this, and this guy is, you know, like um, passing a message to, to the men and everyone else uh, in a meeting uh, like this. Another uh, dialogue that we've had is gender and uh, nutrition. And, and this, this shows then in different, how different areas of the pharma field and business school uh, approach uh, are integrated. And to show that um, uh, men have a role, uh, have a, a role to make, in, a, a, a decision making role in household nutrition, just beyond uh, pro, uh, providing. Uh, I'll just quickly go through uh, ME, uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning, because it is. Uh, for us to be able uh, to work on gender transformative approaches, we also have to be able uh, to monitor the changes. We have to be able uh, to learn as we go along. So uh, as a global program, we are monitoring uh, those specific uh, indicators. But I think at this point, I also want to say that we are working with the Women Empowerment in Agriculture Index, which was developed by IFPRI. But in care, uh, one of the things that we've successfully done is to modify this index to include the agency and relations uh, domains that were lacking in this. And it was one of the things that has been profiled a lot in how we uh, modified this index to be able to, to, to measure women's uh, uh, empowerment. We also have the usual baseline annual and endline uh, reviews. Uh, but I'd like to say here that measuring uh, household uh, influence has been a, a continuing uh, challenge. So we purposed to have a qualitative uh, midterm review study that is going to help us uh, in a mixed method then to be able to triangulate uh, information between the, the baseline. We have the annual review studies. And as I said before, or I'm going to show the participatory performance tracker and how to triangulate all this qualitative and uh, quantitative uh, data. Um, before I leave uh, this particular slide, I'll, I'll just say that uh, for specific recommendations for all of us, for m and &E, is to always disaggregate uh, data uh, uh, by sex. I'm sure it is something that we, uh, we all do, but we need to go to another level and analyze gender and power in local communities. 
to be able to, 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 to work on the agency and social relations and identify the key stakeholders that influence women's lives, decisions, and behaviors. So in so doing, then we'd have cut through both the, the structures and the, uh, and, the, and the relations. Then we'd also need to adopt indicators for women's empowerment that are rooted in local uh, contexts and institutionalize them within our MND uh, systems. So we have, we're working in six countries, and when we adopted the participatory performance tracker from, from Bangladesh, we customized it to each of the value chains, to each of the countries, and the specific gender practices that each country felt were important to them and wanted uh, to improve and, 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 and monitor them. And that is one thing that we can do in uh, people that work in global contexts as, uh, as, uh, as we do. So I'll just show you briefly the, the participatory performance tracker is, is a tool that we use to monitor adoption of practices and not just agricultural practices, markets, gender and nutrition at household level and at individual level and at, uh, at, at, group, uh, at group level. So you would have the practices running across like that, and these are the group members running down like that, and you would be able, they, they do it within themselves as a group, so there is a bit of peer influence there in being able to track uh, who adopted, you know, the first weeding, the second weeding, uh, the inputs that they used, uh, ridges, you know, uh, the workload sharing, uh, those come in there. So right here you would see that a practice there was like adopted almost by everybody else and some of them were adopted and not ad uh, adopted. So this information is then you know, transferred into uh, our records. And um, I may just add that at this point in time, we are piloting in India and, and, and uh, Tanzania uh, with Dimagi uh, on, on, on the community-based based trainers being able to collect this, this uh, information on mobile on a mobile platform and then relay it uh, real time for us to be able to track it and we are going to be uh, uh, taking this uh, further. In terms of the group practices, then we do have groups going between A, B, C and D, specific group practices, attending meetings, collective marketing and being able to see how the groups have gone from, you know, D uh, to, 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 to A and how they graduate and once they get to A then they become hold, holding groups and we begin at the bottom with the groups that need uh, that uh, capacity building in terms of our work under, under collectives. Um, I won't focus on this too much. In terms of our theory of change, these are some of the, 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 the results that we have in terms of uh, improving capacity and access. Uh, you know, the, the, the skills, germination test, the, the, the technologies as the Man, Ma, Mandela Cock for Flotoxin Control in Malawi. We are working with ICRISAT on this. Uh, the soya stacking, some of these, uh, you know, access to, so, to inputs are some of the, the results that, we, that, that we've seen in the last, especially one and a half uh, years. And in terms of productivity and prof profitability, as I said, we are able to track adoption of practices through the PPT, uh, through the agricultural, uh, you know, demos, and farmers are able to see the differences between uh, the different treatments that they, they use and what then means in terms of the, the harvest and the, the money that they've been able to, 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 to gather from all that. So th those are some of the results that we have, but I'll not be focusing uh, too much of those. Uh, in terms of the, the, the fourth and the fifth change levers in uh, household influence and enabling environment, we've um, seen that the, the, the FFBS toolkit and the orientations that we've had around that have improved integration and sequencing, and especially enabled us, uh, I mean, when we talk about the FFBS, it's almost as though it was a gender uh, component and ag because of the, the way they have been able to, to integrate gender, and it has also uh, gone a long way in ensuring we have staff, staff uh, capacity, uh, facilitation skills for being able to, to conduct the gender uh, li uh, uh, dialogues. And as I said before, uh, land advocacy and access at community level with the specific uh, areas that we've been able to work on, on uh, how much land they've accessed. And we have about three case studies that have been 
uh, featured on, on focus on land and how we worked to uh, to ensure access to, to land. Another thing that is happening in all the six countries is that role uh, models are emerging. They are being identified as change agents and working very hard to ensure that there is no backlash uh, from the other uh, men and women actually in the communities on the male uh, change agents, that it is something that, uh, that would uh, continue in being able to change attitudes and practices. Uh, we have anecdotal evidence of shared uh, decisions through, you know, like the focus on land uh, uh, pieces that I've talked about. But uh, we've just gone through a very rigorous midterm review, which was qualitative, that would focus on household, uh, uh, you know, it, it changes uh, around household influence. And I was telling Esther that we'd be happy to share what some of these uh, have been once we analyze the data towards um, in, in the next two or so months and triangulate and, and relate this to the quantitative data from the PPT and the annual review and the, and the annual review studies. Um, this is my last slide and I thought I would end with saying then in terms of uh, the work that we are doing, what would we continue consider as the, as the minimum uh, uh, standards, what is needed uh, for gender in uh, agriculture? Uh, to reach a minimum standard for gender sensitivity and go beyond uh, that. So the first, of course, is gender analysis that goes through uh, all domains of a woman's life, as I said before, not just focusing on the agency, but the structures and the, and, and the relations. And in the value chains work that we do, to realize that there's different points of uh, different entry points and different points of transformation within each value chain and analyze uh, these as such to find uh, opportunities and constraints for being able to make uh, interventions appropriately within each of those uh, areas in the in the value chains. Uh, we also have to be willing to penetrate the household level uh, dynamics and that we have been able to do well and we are actually now being asked by a different donor notes gates foundation to prove that we can go beyond the household into the community because then there's a lot of focus on on the household but once you move to collectives and move them to another level then you begin seeing community level uh, uh, impact uh, another thing is to have uh, staff and skills yes we do need uh, technical you know people because gender is a, a technical skill uh, but i think it is something that we have to uh, um, to ensure that uh, all, uh, you know, research and other project implementation teams uh, have, and to go beyond uh, requesting Esther and the rest for for gender paragraphs, but actually completely integrating gender in in the work that we uh, th that we do. Uh, I think I, I can't say more of that. That we need to engage uh, men from the start. Uh, to secure support for women's uh, participation and also to ensure that there is no uh, uh, backlash, but also to assure the men that we work with that there is uh, th th their perceived threats to, 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 to ensure that we deal this from, from early on. And I've also covered the gender specific uh, technologies uh, and uh, and tools. So we need specific technologies to reduce drudgery for, for women, but we also need specific tools that cut across the different components, uh, uh, the components of each of the work that we uh, that we are doing. Then of course uh, we have to do risk uh, assessment, workload monitoring to ensure that uh, we are not increasing the workloads of uh, of, of women. Uh, track uh, the new technologies and inputs uh, that we have. Ensure that both girls and boys are not being pulled out of school uh, to be able to do this work, and put uh, an emphasis on uh, on record keeping and keep you know checking back with both uh, men and uh, and women, the religious leaders, traditional leaders, uh, at each point of the of our projects and programs that we implement. As I said, that was my last slide. Thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity to share with you what we do, and I now welcome any questions. The presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Maureen, for taking time to prepare this uh, presentation and for finding time to share it with us. And of course, we want to appreciate uh, the investments that CARE has uh, put through this whole process, uh, that today we are 
have an opportunity to learn from this. And uh, I'm going to give us an opportunity to ask questions and to structure it. I'm going to request that we start from Nairobi. We take two questions. Then we shall go to Patancheru and take two questions. We shall go to WCA, take two questions. And then we'll go to, I think, Bulawayo and take two questions. But I noticed that we've already uh, reached one o'clock in Nairobi. I'm hoping that you will allow us to indulge into like another 15 minutes uh, to go through burning questions. But I have negotiated with Maureen that in case we have more questions than we are able to accommodate within those 20 minutes, then we can pop those questions to myself and Wangare, Christine, and she will find time and answer them and we can circulate them on email. So I'm going to request Nairobi, do we have a question? Maybe one or two. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to ask questions. I, I have a, a question which really comes from my background as a researcher and ICRASAT as a research organization. How, how do you see ICRASAT's role in this process of gender research or transformation? I mean, is it what, what is what is ICRASAT's role in this process? Is it is it providing information about technologies? Is it technical information? Is it um, applying tools that you might have developed through through the program? But where, where do researchers fit in? Because I'm, I'm aware that what you've described to us is very much a development type process, although it does have research components. So I'm just, I'm just curious to know your thoughts about how, where you see ECRASAT fitting into this broader picture of this whole gender transformation agenda. Can I suggest we have another one so that she handles the two questions from, uh, yeah, come on. Uh, first of all, I will say uh, thank you to the presenter. Actually, this is the first, uh, is it first or second presentations where when people talk of gender, um, emphasis is put on the woman, man, and, and, the, and the boys. So it's like community-based thing, which is, I think, a good thing. As I think, uh, most of the gender specialists are realizing the backlashes by, um, by excluding men per se. Now, I wanted, okay, for, for example, you talked on profitability. And um, in your view, I mean, in, I mean, in profitability, don't you think at a, level, a certain level we need specialization? Like in the case of um, mechanization, I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have mechanization which which goes directly to the woman. But if the woman can operate it and benefit the woman, I, I don't see, I mean, would you think, see that, because that was where you presented it as uh, uh, being on the left side, being, uh, but to me, I would, I, would, I mean, is, is there something wrong with some of that specialization where a man can take the burden off the woman and leave the woman free? Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, I, I said I would start with that because, of course, there is no uh, problem with the kinds of technologies that if the men took it up, then the wom they, would they, they would ease the burden on the women. Um, the problem is where we develop a specific technology in, in a value chain where uh, women are already, you know, suffering from, from drudgery. Uh, let's say, for instance, um, uh, harvesting. And once we get to these communities, the perception is that uh, a machine belongs to the man. He's the one who would be able to do it. So the men continue to use the machine, but the women still have to continue uh, to harvest. Yeah, We have cases where, uh, like in Bangladesh, where we still have a large percentage of women working as wage uh, laborers together with the men and even being paid less than the men. So if there was an intervention where the men are the ones using the machines, these women who are working as wage laborers still have to uh, do all the treasurer's work in addition to their caregiving role. I think that is where the problem, uh, that, that is where the problem uh, comes in. That when we uh, 
develop these technologies, we have to consult and consult again uh, with the communities in terms of their, uh, their, their, their targeting. Uh, in terms of ICRISAT's uh, role, as I said, we're already partnering uh, with ICRISAT in, um, uh, especially in Malawi and to a smaller extent uh, in, in, in India. I see, I mean, coming from a research for development uh, um, uh, uh, kind of angle, I see ICRISAT playing a role in, 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 in various in, in all the work that we do in terms of working with us to generate technologies. And if I give a specific example of what we do in Malawi, when we are determining the treatment and the evaluation options that the farmers are going to, to go through, we sit down with the farmers and ICRISAT and say, we would like to have this as a control. We would like to have this, you know, like half fertilizer, half organic fertilizer, half inorganic fertilizer. We'd like to, you know, test for ridges for this and that specific reason. So instead, in, in terms of coming up with that technical uh, backstopping, and from our end, we have all this other information on how, uh, uh, you know, the, the practices that were adopted, you know, through the participatory performance tracking, the ones that were difficult to, you know, to, to, to track and uh, get together on the drawing board with ICRISAT and being able to course correct and determine how we, how, how we move ahead. We are also um, working uh, with the with the with the with ICRISAT in terms of uh, uh, access to inputs, uh, access to groundnut seed, as you know, and soybean is a big issue in, in in Malawi because the and elsewhere really because the mainstream systems are, are are well built for maize and other crops. So we are working with ICRISAT to contract pathways farmers to ensure there's easy access to inputs, also for ICRISAT as well as the farmers that we are working mm -hmm. with, and ensuring that women are playing a different in the value chain. They are also, you know, going into producing seed, uh, you know, that has come uh, from, you know, from a research uh, a research uh, uh, recommendation. Uh, we also see a lot of, you know, uh, synergy in terms of the tools that we uh, we develop. The Farmer Field and Business School is a work in progress. We are working uh, with research organizations, academic partners such as uh, Yale uh, University and Cornell in the, you know, our metrics on gender and women's empowerment, and I think, uh, and as well as IFPRI on the, on the Women's Empowerment Index. And this is a space where working together with the, with ICRISAT, ensuring that we are in that research uh, for development continuum. So I see a lot of, um, uh, I mean, a big role for ICRISAT in that sense. Okay, thank you very much, Maureen, for responding to those two questions. We do have a question from um, Patanjeru. Uh, the first say, thank you for your good presentation. And the question is, what criteria did you use in creating the Coping Strategies Index and Women Empowerment Index? Is it widely accepted and do you know, do you now report it? Uh, yes, the, um, I'll start again with the Women Empowerment Index that is reported, and we can share some uh, publications in how we we worked with the uh, with IFPRI. Uh, the Pathways ME system was uh, set up in collaboration with Tango, uh, which is a uh, technical advice for NGOs. It's an international NGO, and uh, together we worked with um, uh, with IFPRI in modifying uh, the specific uh, indicators within the standard Women in Empowerment in Index that was developed for USID by IFPRI. So in this, we included uh, 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 indicators such as self-confidence and mobility that were not in the, in the, in the original. It is uh, uh, accepted and we've actually uh, been able to make a, a couple of publications uh, uh, from that. Uh, the coping uh, strategies uh, index is more on our work on resilience, the climate smart agriculture practices are for resilience, and we, we also worked with the Cornell University on uh, on 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 this uh, the, the coping strategies index, and there is also publications and information that we can share in that regard, and it's uh, uh, acceptable. But I have to say that we are working again, uh, as we speak right now with Cornell, in terms of our baseline studies where we uh, we looked through the um, the shocks and stresses that, that these families uh, face and, the, and their coping strategies. And what could we have done better in injecting a resilience uh, focus? And we have 
that work and the publication coming up in that regard that we can we can that we can share. Okay. Do we have a second question from Patanchero? Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me, Nairobi? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is Patmaja, and I have one question for Maureen. Uh, there is a connection or a nexus between gender and nutrition. You know that one of the, uh, the IDOs is to enhance maternal health and reduce childhood stunting. So I would like to know uh, your experiences. You have said that you are measuring nutri nutrition outcomes in your m &E framework. So could you share us some examples of how you are actually measuring the nutrition outcomes? Yeah, as I said before, in our nutrition work, we are basically measuring the nutrition outcomes as a result of increased dietary diversity, production, and incomes, uh, but not going into the details of anthropometric measurements and stunting and 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 and, and all and and all that. Uh, but within uh, Care USA, I said Pathways is an anchor program uh, for the food and nutrition security. We have another program, Nutrition at the Center, uh, which is called Nutrition at the Center, that is working on uh, on some of these gender and, and, and nutrition uh, dimensions. And it seems as say we will be able to, uh, to answer this better. But within, I mean, the context of that program and able to get uh, further information on that, but within Pathways, we are basically measuring nutrition uh, outcomes. Okay, thank you. Padmaja, are you okay with that response? Okay. Okay, we're going now to shift to WCA. Do we have a question from WCA? I have more of a comment. Thank you, Maureen, and actually my comment is a little bit to Alistair as well, that this question about what does this mean for Intersight, and one of the nice things that Maureen's presentation illustrated was thinking about exploitation on her chart from exploitation to transformative. But as researchers, one thing that we can think about is are our activities or our questions or the work that we're doing, is it any way exploitative of anyone? And so that's, um, and I would welcome Maureen to elaborate on that since obviously the care has been working in that angle. Thank you, Wenda, but I'm not sure that Maureen understood what you said. Can I request you to kindly repeat? And focus on yes. And focus on the mic. It, it's more, um, Going back to Alistair's question of what this means for ICRSAT and the focus that CARE has made on identifying aspects of development or their work that's exploitive and that that's a lesson for us as researchers in our projects to look for either values or questions or the actual technologies but aspects that might be exploitive is a way that we can learn from what CARE is doing to think further about exploitation in our research as in terms of outcomes or even in terms of the values that are shaping the research that we do. Uh, okay, I'm trying to, to, I'll try and repeat what Wenda has said, but I think she's talking about the exploitative approaches and some of the values that we have as researchers and sometimes we go on to uh, like maintaining the exploitative approaches and I think she's asking, uh, do, have you developed values that can be like monitored to help us uh, identify those kind of aspects in our research work? Sorry, Wenda, if I'm not representing you, but that's what I think I understood. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, uh, as I said, I think in in one of the last slides, oh no, he has another question. There's a second question from West Africa. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Esther? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, okay, uh, this is now I can hear you. Please continue. Now, Olin, thanks for the presentation. I want to refer specifically to one aspect of your presentation, that access to land, the land issue. And we know that this is a general problem even for many farmers uh, to have access to land. And how, how, how did you really handle this issue in your study of care? Uh, how do you bring in the gender aspect of it? Uh, thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, I think what he's asking is, how did you handle access to land? Because it's not only an issue of a challenge for women, but even for the men. So in your work, how did you handle the access issue? So the two issues from West Africa is the exploitation and access to land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as I said, in, in, in I think in one of the last slides, that when we do a gender analysis or gender a gendered value chain uh, uh, analysis where we focus on all aspects of a woman's life. Uh, within care, we have about eight areas, uh, eight areas that we call the core areas uh, of inquiry, and along these, the specific uh, guidelines. So, if you're talking about self confidence, uh, aspirations for, for oneself, uh, access to productive resources, and along with this, we have developed a good uh, practices uh, framework. Uh, that goes through uh, the, the the continuum from uh, exploitative uh, to accommodating. What under what it means under each of those core areas of inquiry to guide our work. So each specific program would sit down to go through the the, the eight uh, areas of inquiry to to cast. Uh, the program, the theory of change, and how you're going to impact uh, each of these areas, whether a specific approach might be exploitative, accommodating, or, transform or, or transformative, and then uh, customize the agency structures and relations framework to be able to address these core areas of inquiry. And that's a document I can share at a click of a button. The good practices uh, framework and the gender analysis guide that takes us through uh, each of these core areas of, uh, of inquiry. Uh, on access to land, um, uh, uh, as I said, we first really focused on working with the traditional leaders and uh, religious uh, uh, leaders who in, in communal land uh, tenure systems, as we have in most, like in most of the areas that we, the, that we work, are the custodians of the community land. We also uh, focused on the existing local those taxes, like in Tanzania, they had a new agriculture bill, and in in Ghana, the farm bill. I might conf be confusing the names for the countries, whether the agriculture bill or the farm bill, but it's basically the same thing. And the one in Mali stipulated that at least 10% of all agricultural land uh, should be allocated uh, to women. So this is. Uh, the first, uh, you know, uh, 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 stop. I mean, that the first, um, the first area of intervention in ensuring that uh, the women, the traditional elders, have awareness about this law. It's one thing to have it; another thing for them to be aware and for them to be able to be having continuous uh, gender uh, dialogues uh, with them and ensuring that then they allocate specific amounts of land uh, to women. Same case as uh, Bangladesh, where we have uh, roadside land. And the, 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 the value chain that we are doing there is indigo that would grow better on the roadside because most of the areas is used for paddy and working with the district governments uh, to show the provisions in the law and to show them what the land would, uh, would do in terms of uh, 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 productivity. So. Yeah, in a nutshell, the laws and the practices, and also through uh, literacy, uh, land literacy, and legal uh, literacy around uh, their rights um, around land and, and all this. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question coming from Blawayo. It's more of a comment, and I'm wondering whether it's more for Maureen or for us to think about. But it says that thinking about our integrated marketing oriented development, that's IMOD. A challenge is to engage the women and the men in a common vision towards improving their livelihoods and context to work. Where do women see opportunities? What is needed to facilitate such processes? I don't know whether it's fair to ask Maureen that question, or, or is a question that we should carry on as ICRISAT and see in IMOD, how do we integrate gender considerations? But I don't know whether Maureen, you're familiar with our IMOD approach and framework, and whether you want to say anything about it, or 
I should let us think about this maybe going forward. We carry forward. I think we seem to be agreeing that this is a question for us at ICRISAT. It's an internal issue which we need to carry forward in our discussions. Maybe thinking about what Maureen has presented to us and the way they have uh, reorganized their work around the framework and identifying the areas, the gender questions, the approaches, the tools that they have developed. Can we do something similar maybe for IMOD? I guess Bulawayo will take that as an internal uh, issue for discussion. But I would like to ask whether in Bulawayo you have a second question? I'm sorry. From it, it's not, Do we have... Uh, Hello. Um, it's more comment to the comment because the care approach was stepping into existing value chains to promote women in that. And my comment was to say, I think we need to also think about engaging women and men in long-term planning processes, harnessing local opportunities. And this can be beyond one or the other value chain. And do you see potential for that in your approach? And if so, I'm talking about resilience as the long-term ability of a system to find new opportunities. So how can you incorporate that in, in your approach? Um, in terms of long-term, we don't see pathways as, for instance, a five-year a five -year program, as this is a programming a platform on food and nutrition security, as well as women's empowerment, both in our work, uh, both at global level and country-specific work, and in our work um, with the specific uh, communities. So as we, um, as, we, as we move along, we've already gone through the first one and a half years uh, 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 our immediate review, some of the areas uh, that are coming up with the, uh, I mean, that we need first to ensure uh, the entire system is resilient, so of course, is uh, paying attention to the climate smart agriculture practices, and it, it, it got us to go onto the drawing board and see how we can better analyze uh, and integrate res resilience in our work. Uh, there is an issue around uh, partnerships. There is an issue again around engaging men and 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 uh, and, and and boys and religious and, and thought uh, leaders and of course uh, building upon this into the higher um, uh, laws uh, I mean policies uh, specifically. So one of the areas is like the farmer field and uh, and and business uh, school. We are already having discussions in Malawi with the Ministry of Agriculture on how it can be taken to another level as an extension. Uh, 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 approach, how we can recognize the community-based trainers for the gap uh, that they have been able to, to bridge with uh, services. Okay, thank you so much, Maureen, for the responses. And as we come towards the end, I notice we have our CRP directors, we have uh, Noel and Shoba, and I don't know if they want to make any comments as we come to what's the end. What's the end? Just to say thank you, and uh, I, I was actually quite interested in the, I was going to ask the question that uh, Fatma asked about uh, nutrition, and I think we'll probably have a follow-up on that to my, uh, my discussion. I think it's uh, very helpful also to uh, associate the, the work that you're doing in care with the work of the CRP, so thank you for your time, and thank you for the presentation and answering our questions. Thank you. Much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for the great uh, opportunity we've had to share. And uh, we want to maybe give Maureen an applaud from our locations and appreciate her time and uh, the effort that they've put together for this presentation. Um, so if there are any other questions that will come from the locations, kindly send them to me and uh, maybe with a copy to Wangare and we'll see how we can communicate that to Maureen and with, within time she can give us responses and we can circulate them.
uh, we'll also be able to share the presentation that she has uh, shared with us. We can send it out for further references by the different people in the different locations. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time, and uh, may you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Ethiopia. Thank you, Modi.